Jake Paul's entry into the realm of boxing has enraged a number of influential people, notably Dana White, the head of the Ultimate Fighting Championship. Jake Paul, a YouTube celebrity and influencer, has gained a lot of attention for his boxing exploits. In today's video, we will be talking about Jake Paul explaining why the feud with Dana White is real. First up, the recent back and forth between Jake Paul and Dana White. The amateur boxer is seeking more challengers to fight in the ring after winning five fights. Unfortunately, his alternative are limited, especially because none of White's UFC fighters are allowed to do so. Following his knockout victory over Tyrone Woodley, Paul challenged Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal, both were there at the time, to a fight. Paul, on the other hand, is unlikely to fight any UFC competitor without White's permission. White stated on the record on an episode of The Fight with Teddy Atlas podcast that he has no intention of letting Diaz or Masvidal battle Paul. Then, around January 1st, 2022, Paul sent White a tweet with a list of requests about UFC fighter salary and perks. First, he demanded that White double every fighter's salary to $50,000 each bout, up from the current $12,000, and give them half of the company's yearly earnings. Paul also asked that White give long-term healthcare benefits to his fighters, presumably in reaction to White's claim that brain injury is part of the gig. The offer would be valid for five days, and if White agreed, Paul will retire from boxing and promise to face Masvidal once. White responds with a video just a day after Paul's tweet. White actually claims that the amateur fighter publicly stated that he had used cocaine, although he actually did not. He then accused Paul of taking anabolic steroids. As a result, White wants to test Paul for steroids, use at random for another two years. White concludes the video by encouraging Paul to create his own company if he believes the UFC is doing something wrong, and that he can treat the fighters better. He then goes on to suggest that because Paul isn't a celebrity, and can't sell pay-per-views, he's turning to pay-per-view superstars such as Jorge Masvidal and Conor McGregor. The next day, Paul responded again by video. He refutes White's allegations of steroid usage and riding on the backs of UFC's pay-per-view superstars, claiming that his mother seems to have more Instagram likes than Masvidal. He then chastises White for not complying with his requests, referring to him as a dog in the corner. Paul goes on to say that he's trying to revolutionize the sport forever and that his major concern is White's refusal to pay his competitors over $12,000 per bout and to provide them with adequate health care. Many people are pleased to see Paul fighting for fairer compensation for fighters, feeling that it exposes the UFC's corrupt corporate methods. Others, on the other hand, are skeptical of Paul's motives, believing that the influencer is merely doing it for the clout. The Paul brothers, after all, are no strangers to controversy. Regardless of Paul's intentions, his words have undoubtedly enraged the MMA community and gotten conversations started about the UFC. Next, Paul has a problem with White not paying UFC fighters enough, and that's the source of the fight in Paul. Following the price rise of UFC pay-per-view events, Jake Paul took another shot at Dana White about fighter compensation. Over the previous six months, the YouTuber converted boxer has railed against the UFC's pay system on several occasions, including personal assaults on White. Paul is refusing to back down and demands that White pay fighters a fair $50,000 in a year and provide health care. Up next, Jake Paul invested in the parent corporation of the UFC as he escalates his dispute with Dana White. With his investment in the UFC's parent business, Jake Paul is well on his way to achieving his aim of changing fighter compensation. The 25-year-old has often fought with UFC president Dana White about the amount of money he pays his athletes. Paul has now invested in Endeavor, the company that owns the rights to the Ultimate Fighting Championship. The corporation is the largest MMA promotion brand, and it went public for the first time in 2021 with the sales of its shares. The problem child expressed his displeasure with the amount of money received by competitors at UFC 270 over the weekend on Twitter. A total of 1.8 million was given out to all of the combatants. Paul then mentioned Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder's rumored $50 million in prize money from their three fights. The ex-YouTuber turned boxer hasn't mentioned how much money he's committed or how much property he owns. However, he stated on Twitter, I've invested in EDR, UFC, and will continue to work with my colleague at Jeffrey Wu, too, on UFC's ESG fighter standards. We believe that boosting UFC fighter compensation and providing them with health care, EDR can produce long-term economic benefit. I'm contacting at engine number one to collaborate on this project. 
Paul is notorious for his large-scale antics, which he uses to get attention on social media. However, it appears that he has a morally proper motivation rather than merely seeking the limelight, as his objective also includes assisting the UFC fighter's long-term health. On Twitter, he demonstrated how much weight Conor McGregor had to reduce to compete in the welterweight division and how health should always come first. After sending Tyrone Woodley scurrying for the second time, Paul is yet to clarify his next move in the fight game. He's been observed doing some MMA training and might be gearing up for a fight in the octagon shortly. Dana White has kept his firm stance and told critics to back off. The most recent stories about fighter pay have centered on the talks for a Francis Ngannou vs. John Jones super fight, which has come to a halt as the conflict between other fighters as well as the UFC has spilled into the public view. However, along with Dana White, the UFC has defended its fighter pay. The UFC has been enormously popular and profitable with the organization bragging year after year that it has broken all of its financial records. One of the most common critiques labeled against the MMA world champion is that fighter compensation hasn't kept pace with the sport's growth and athletes still receive a small portion of the money. The media has long debated if UFC athletes and MMA fighters overall getting appropriately compensated. But if White had his way, there would be far less discussion from people he considers to be uneducated outsiders. Following the MMA boom of the 2000s, many companies in North America arose to compete with the UFC, including Strike Force, Bellator, as well as the World Series of Fighting, now the Professional Competitors League, each with its own set of incentives to lure fighters to sign with them. Despite this, the UFC continues continues to command the majority of the MMA market. The UFC boasts lucrative media deals with ESPN and multi-million dollar sponsorship deals with corporations like Venom, the UFC's official gear brand, Monster, including most recently Crypto.com. According to research released in 2019 as part of the ongoing antitrust case against the UFC, the promotion is expecting to generate $980 million in sales in 2020, with fighters earning 20% of that money. About $196 million. Fighters were paid 63% of Strike Force's income and 44.7% of Bellator's revenue. Because of the UFC's financial success, several athletes have spoken out against what they believe is an unequal distribution of revenues. Jones, the three-time UFC light heavyweight champion, is one of them, and his career might be put on hold till next year unless he and the UFC can agree on a significant salary hike. White claims that his connection with Jones is still in good shape. When it was stated that debates concerning fighter compensation had been increasingly common in recent months, White brushed it off. Next, what is the average pay for UFC fighters? UFC fighters make the majority of their money from bouts and the money they earn from them. Each time they enter the octagon, the fighters normally enter a deal for a set number of fights for a set amount of money. Low, middle, and high levels earn between $10,000 and $30,000 every battle, with the highest tier earning somewhere around $500,000 and $3 million each fight. When new fighters sign with the UFC, they normally earn the lowest tier contract. A better contract is signed to a medium tier, spanning between $80,000 to $250,000 each fight, after a few wins and a reputation within the octagon. The rewards each fighter receives are determined by the boxer's popularity and previous results and can range from tens of thousands of dollars to a few hundred thousand dollars. The finest form of contract, the highest tier, is given to UFC champions and athletes with the largest fan following, ranging from $500,000 to $3 million per fight. UFC athletes may make as much as half a million dollars, up to three million dollars, every bout, if not more, depending on how many viewers and fans they attract. That's all we have for today's video. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. So, what do you think about the feud between Jake Paul and Dana White? Do you think White should pay fighters more? Or should Paul mind his own business? Let us know in the comments down below.